All right. I am here with Sarah Heward from Mott and Chase, Sotheby's International Real Estate. And we are going to be talking about gaining referrals through small business interviews. Hey, Sarah, how are you today? Hey, Jen. I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm glad you could come on and share this. Can you just give us a little bit of background about how you started doing these small interviews and kind of like why you started doing it, what you thought it was going to be like, and then what actually happened? Yeah, so it was during COVID and I was trying to think of how I could help small businesses Mm -hmm. And having grown up in Rhode Island, um, I know a lot of the owners and just trying to think of what I could, something tangible I could do to help. So I thought about um, getting them more business, how, you know, in addition to like we all did during the pandemic, buy gift cards and um, do that type of thing. I thought that if I could try to drive in business that ideally would be the most beneficial for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I got involved with thinking about interviews and most small business owners lack the capacity to even spend time on social media. Well, marketing in general is like almost impossible if you're a small business. Exactly. Because they, they, you know, just like we are in real estate where we wear the hats of everything, right? Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. They are the same. So the person who's making the pasta is also the one that's doing the books and trying to, you know, create an Instagram account, let alone manage it. And so, um, that was kind of my, my thought process was, okay, that's something I can do. Mm -hmm. And selfishly, I knew I would love it because I, I love hearing the story behind a person. You know, I feel like we all Mm -hmm. have something to share. Um, Just like when you're in a house listing it, I always feel like every house tells a story. So I knew that I would enjoy it and I Mm -hmm. thought it would be helpful. Um, And I want to say to a year and a half in, I have yet to have someone say, no, thank you, when I seek an interview. Um, so what, what essentially it entails uh, for realtors, the way you can use it to perhaps drive business is to, just like you do when you're marketing, is identify your niche. Mm-hmm. Um And for me, it's a community. So what community do you know a lot about Mm -hmm. or what community do you want to share with other people? Mm -hmm. Um, And you can kind of do either one. Um, So I identified one town initially. And it could be like where you do a lot of business in if 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 your city's like really big or whatever, right? Okay. Yes. Or where you want to do a lot of business. Exactly. Right. You can take it one of two ways. You can take it to the area you're very familiar with or an area you want to expand your footprint in as as an agent. Um, Because essentially when you produce these videos and you share them, people see you as a trusted resource. Right. Just like in real estate. So that's where it lands. It lends itself to becoming a referral magnet, if you will, because people see you as the expert in the area because you're out and about um, yeah. interviewing these businesses, you must know what the- You area- must know everything. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and you're getting in front of them and you created like an, an infographic basically yes. that has like six steps to doing this. Yes. Um, if you're listening, we'll include the link in the show notes. Yeah. You can also get it at jennifermertland.com slash vault. Or if you just message Sarah. Oh, I'll send it. Yeah. She'll send it for a referral. yeah yeah they're easy you know the the big thing is establishing who you want to interview and then I've done it for people I know but then I started doing it for the newer small businesses that I didn't know but I and I wanted to give some love to and I felt like people would love hearing about for instance a new brewery opened up in our area in the heat of COVID Um, and so I thought, wow, you know, these people not only need some attention, but I think the community will love it. And, and that'll be a place when we could 
gather, that would be a place people would want to do it, you know, go to. So, um, and then it's just reaching out to the people. You can go into the store. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, most honestly, I DM most people because I follow them anyhow on Instagram. Right. right. And then they can check me out, you know. Right. And, and I say are, to right. them, I'm doing this, um, you know, so it's no charge to them, which they're usually surprised by. They feel like there's some hook. Right, right. Uh, but there really, there isn't. Um, and I explain my my reasoning for doing it. I'm, you know, mm-hmm. trying to support them and, and showcase them to the community. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they can, you know, they can vet me out and, and see if I'm legit. Um, but I have, you know, no one has said no. The only constraint I have, which I'm sure you can relate to where you are, is that everyone's short stacked. Yeah. So even though my interviews are only 20 to 25 minutes long, can they That's carve pretty out? long. Well, it I tend to be long-winded too. So it doesn't have to be that long. Mm-hmm. Um uh, the most of the grunt work is on my end when I'm producing the videos afterward, but it's usually, uh, I'll say to them, ideally you go in during business hours because you want to show the viewers that the store, the restaurant is busy. Right. So I've, I've done it with, you know, ninja blenders going on in the background and, um, and, and just finding a good location. I just use, um, a gimbal and my iPhone and we choose a good background and it's it's basically a five to six question um interview per se where you're you're asking the the same questions over and over again I I don't I try not to because a I get bored um in in the beginning I went in with a script and now I just go in and I talk to them right yeah and I research beforehand you know, mm-hmm. you, you get a sense of, of the, the background of the store and because you want to highlight items that are going to be attractive to the viewers and make them want to go in. Um, that makes and, sense. Yeah. How often are you putting these out? Well, I've, um, you know, because I'm an active agent, it, it's time to, to budget the time on my end. Um, you know, initially I said I'll do do like three a month. And I, you know, one month, I, I think I did like six, but it was when I was slower. Yeah. Um, now, if I do one every few weeks, I'm in good shape because, because then it's, then it entails making the video um, and then posting it isn't a big deal, but you want to make sure you do that thoroughly. Um, yeah. Like, where are you? where you post it. Cause you could even do like neighborhood spotlights or yeah. you could do, there's a lot of things that you can do. I think it is about the consistency of it. Right. Yes. So even if it's like once a month, I think that's okay. But where are you putting this in the video? Yeah, and you can create reels too. Um, the more you can repurpose the one video, the better action you're going to get. And then the more likely they are to share it. Um, so I, um, will post the videos to Instagram. I also post them to my personal Facebook and business Facebook and then, and LinkedIn. Um, good idea. Yeah. Yeah. I get a lot of action from LinkedIn because that's so business focused. Mm -hmm. Um, people not only like that you're supporting other businesses, but then they're business minded. So they're intrigued to find out more perhaps about that business. Um, and, and, and because a lot of the owners lack the capacity to share it, um, I send an email out afterward that has a link to the video. It has the actual, and you're uploading it to like YouTube. Yes. Okay. Upload it to YouTube and then you can, you know, grab the link and then you can post it on your own. I post on my own website. Um, and with Facebook groups now, you you have to be careful because um, you know a lot of Facebook groups will have recommendation pages, but if you link it at all to your business, then some of the admin on those pages will say no, thank you. But if you don't, you know, if I didn't mention I was a realtor, you know, then I could put it up more places. But um, there are groups on Facebook that you can post it to that will also get 
a lot of traction. I think it just depends on like what you're doing. Right. So like yeah. there's things that we do like a weekly, um, like a talk amongst ourselves about a topic, like a real estate topic. And it's a video and we've been putting it on our Google page and that's been getting a lot of traffic. Um, yeah, Google nice. business. I put it on that page as well. And it's easy. It's yes. not hard. Yeah. But I think like for people, if they are just starting out, what are your tips for like, well, we said frequency was like once a month when you're just yeah. starting out, right? Yes. What are you about for equipment? So I keep it basic. In the beginning, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a fancy microphone. I'm going to get the ring light. I'm gonna... No, all you need is an iPhone or an Android, you know, whatever. You but are the... you on the video with them or? Are yes. They... Okay. Yeah. So do you have like a stand? Yes. I just went on Amazon and bought a simple stand. I prop, I prop the iPhone up. And then you position yourself next to the um, interviewee because you want to engage them in a conversation right. and, as well as- Most of them you, are going to be nervous if it's just them. Yes. they, And that's another objection I typically get is, oh, can we do it without a video? And, or can you just interview me and do it as a blog? Um but video is what moves and right. video is what's going to bring them business. And it does work. It works as a referral tool and it also drives up business. Countless people have, will text me and say, oh, I just checked out such and such on Main Street because I loved your video. Yeah. Um, and so, and also for referrals, I've had several people reach out to me. And they, you know, I love what you're doing with small businesses. Um, I can tell you're passionate about what you do. You know Rhode Island well. Can you, you know, can you come take a look at my home? You know, probably the more you niche it, the better off you're going to be. Like, yeah, you have like a specific part of town, but then it would be like, I guess there would be nervous. Like, are you going to run out of content? But you really don't. No. So I, I do an area. So I do a group of like three towns, which abut each other in Rhode Island. If you can find an area where people are going to naturally want to frequent. So if someone sees one video and then they hashtag the next town over your video might populate. Right. Um, and that's, that's again, because then people don't see you as an expert of one area they see you as a trusted advisor for a few areas, a few right. towns. Right. Um, easy to do in Rhode Island because we're so everything's so small. <laughs> um, harder to do, you know, where you are um, or in in big cities. But m- I, my tip is to to do it with frequency. Start with what you know, and then expand from there. Right. Um, and and just post the heck out of it because, and try to reuse it for reels or um, stories. Um, so when you, you reuse it for stories, you're yeah. cutting, you're editing yes. some of the video. Okay. And I'm novice, you know, you can use Vimeo, which is great. Uh, V-I-M-E-O. There's a free version or a paid version. I love Vimeo. Um, you can just do the, you know, the iMovie. Um, and, and I, I YouTube, you know, how to create a great video. Yeah. Um, you can pay someone to do it, but honestly, people, and I say this to the people I'm interviewing, they're, they're not interested as much as what I look like or what I'm saying. They just right. want to get a sense of what that shop is all about, what they're about. Cause especially Rhode Island, people aren't likely to try new things unless they feel like they know what they're going to get when yeah. they get there. Right. Um, so yeah, you, so it's, it's very relaxed and low key in nature. Um, and you can, you can, when you're approaching the store, I try to do little video, you know, small videos of the streetscape. Mm -hmm. Um, you can use that for something else. You can use that for a story like, oh, here I am in downtown Warren. Yeah. Getting ready to head and check out whatever, watch my feed for, Yes, I see what you're saying. I love it. And then, yeah, you could even then do like eat there or whatever, or try something and do like a review, which is another real. Exactly. Or another story. And, if, 
and I like to write blogs on my website. So then you can use the material for, for blog usage too. And you're always, you know, you're always tagging them, mm -hmm. um, adding the hashtags to try to continue to be consistent. Engage in the conversation. Yeah. yeah. I think this is a really good idea. And you're right. Most realtors, like they would think this is fun and you're already out and about anyway. Yeah. So just, you know, just so you, so you might as well just go ahead and, and spotlight these or you're frequenting these places anyway, right? Exactly. And it can even be just like, it can be as simple as like some of your favorite things that you do or, but it, you're right. If you like work with other people and help other people, it will help you too. It, yes, definitely. Because you're invoking trust within the community mm -hmm. by being that knowledge source. Right. And, um, everyone, you know, everyone's scrolling on their phone. So they see great, you know, still shots of, of a brewery, for instance, or I'm, today I'm going to a mother daughter clothing shop. That's really funky and cool. That's fun. Yes. And they stop and then they see, um, well, who's posting all these videos and they reach out to you. Sometimes people just text me and say, Hey, Sarah, you know, love that video. Where's that coffee shop you just mentioned? Right. Um, and, you know, because the more you're, oh, you heighten their awareness of you, then naturally. Like you're the resource and that's what we all want to be for everything, exactly. right? For the neighborhood, for the house, for everything. Yes. Well, yeah. Sarah, I really appreciate you being on. If oh, people on. have a referral for you in Rhode Island, or they just want to like maybe flesh out their idea about what they can do. What is the best way to get a hold of you? Sure. So they can, um, they can text me. It's uh, 401-255-2578. Or you can find me on Instagram. It's Sarah Heward, H-U-A-R-D dot real estate. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.